Hi everyone, welcome to Board of Tanks with Stewie JP. I'm Stewie and this is another replay from Pyro's recent campaign adventure on the Asian server. Campaign 5, Steel Corridor, or Steel Corridor, where a lot of the Pyro lads, in fact I think all the Pyro lads ended up winning one of the reward tanks. Apologies for the delay, I've been a little bit unwell and I haven't been able to leave the bed until this morning. But, in this replay, this is against VAE. VAE, Vietnamese, Vietnam's Army Elite, an old nemesis of Pyro, and Skell giving us a little bit of a demonstration here how to do one of his famous boosts. Of course, all the team efficiency lads love their boosts. Boosts being a tactic used in their Gold League games to get into unusual spaces on the map. Now looking at the way Pyro are set up in this game, and also obviously I've seen the whole game, um, they're clearly defending this block of land here on Arctic region. And looking at looking at the way these tanks are all set up, you know, a couple of heavies defending the, the traditional heavy line on Arctic region, an IS-4 up here in a very unusual spot for a heavy tank, but and some mediums back here defending the northern part of the map now without giving too much away this game does go for a little while and there are long periods of not much really happening like early on they've, they've spotted a 907 and now they've spotted the TVP and of course that's Skell who's spotting that tank as shown by the notification that comes up when, when you spot the tank now with the Hardy has a shot at the check auto loader and now it's just a case of, of waiting. Now you can see the position that Skull's got himself into. He's getting spotting over here where that 113 is. A notification just came up that um, that 113 was spotted by the bat chat, not by the 907 who's hiding up here and he also spotted this T11 OE5. Now, Skell showing great restraint here, not not firing. He's not risking giving his position away to the enemy. Um, instead, he's going to try and keep these tanks lit up so that their artillery and maybe maybe these mediums that are back near the artillery can can have shots at these enemy tanks. Now, the 907 getting pretty close to where Skell is here. VAE obviously have worked out that. Um, Pyro are having a, a bit of a bit of a camp off here, and so they've sent a 907 up nice and close to try and try and light up these tanks that are around this corner, and, and maybe even these tanks that are all the way back in the northeastern ditch, I suppose you'd call it. Now the good thing about the these tier 10 battles it's obviously 15 versus 15 all at tier 10 and sometimes different tactics get used and sometimes you don't often see pyro playing like this they generally go for the win and I guess they're probably just trying to force VAE to attack and maximize their fame points of course these campaigns goes on fame points by how much damage and how much spotting and how many how much XP you get per game gives you a, gives you points which you go up on a scoreboard to which which determines it determines how you go in the campaign if that makes sense I don't think that was I don't think I was very clear explaining that but basically it's to win the tank you need to play a certain amount of games and you need to do some damage and all that kind of stuff but in this in this game, it looks like artillery just swung, took a swing and missed somewhere not too far from where Skell is, up on top of that hill. Probably aiming for the IS-4. You'd have made the IS-4 must be lit by this 907 here. There's no no way in the world he's is not being lit by the 907. And again, Skell's showing great restraint, not shooting at those those tanks. There'd be a very good chance that he'd be lit if he fired. And 
So he's not doing that. Instead of firing and, and getting damage from himself, he's picking up spotting damage and helping the artillery's get shots at the enemy tanks. You can see the arty. One of the arties just killed the 113. The tier 10 Chinese heavy tank with just over nine and a half minutes left in the game. A little bit of a wait and see situation here. The 907, which is not too far from Scalini's Batchat. Of course, that circle you see on the minimap, which is part of the game now, that circle will... Um, if he gets within that circle, Scal will be spotted. But you can see where he is on that mountain. He, he can't really get within that circle without going up the mountain or going up to where that IS-4 is. So all that Object 907 will be doing is spotting the IS-4. And possibly when he runs around this side, that these E5s that are hiding around the corner. You can see Pyro gone for a little bit of a, a different lineup to what they have in the past in some of the other replays, going with three Russian heavy tanks, three American heavy tanks, an E3, two Conqueror gun carriers, and the rest medium tanks. With just over eight minutes to go, it's still a case of wait and see here. It looks like VAE have got a decent amount of tanks in the north. And this 907 still on full health. So they haven't decided to push on that 907. Of course, if they do push on that 907, all these heavy tanks should have shots towards that area where the object 907 is. Still waiting, still waiting in this game. And this is what it's like in a bit of a camp off. You've got one eye on the clock nearly down to half the halfway mark with the score at 1-0 and those E5s every now and then they're just getting lit those E5s and you can bet bet your last dollar that those two artilleries will be dropping arty shells on these heavy tanks here which don't really look like they're moving too much Every time they get lit, they're, they're still in the same spot. Those three American heavy tanks on the enemy side, as well as the Chinese, 113. So it would be pretty, a pretty safe bet for the Conquerors just to keep shelling that area because we don't... Every time they get lit, they're not really in any different kind of position. 113, getting a little bit of a poke. I'm not sure if they're spotting that Object 907 up in the north. Hardy shoots and takes him down for 1,018 hit points. Again, the notification telling us that Skull's the one doing the spotting. Even though the 907's closer, I think the, the view range of the bat chat from being up high is probably a little bit better than the Russian medium tank. And with just over six minutes left in this game, it's... They're really showing their patience, the pyro guys. Uh, it looks like looking at... Um, if I just zoom out, not many, a few of those heavies, the E5s and the IS-4, they've taken a little bit of damage. That 907 in a really good spot over there, but he's still at full health. And the other, the other group of campers to the east, they're all still pretty much full health as well. So be safe to assume that be safe to assume that the, a lot of the VAE tanks are, are on a, a significantly less amount of health than the pyro guys, and that's mainly down to those two artillery pieces firing away at them. And with five and a half minutes left in this battle, then um, pyro pretty much in the in the in the right place to pull off this win or draw. It's, it's a, the, the fact that they're camping this tells me that they probably own this block of land that VAE are attacking. 
Um, if you remember looking at the map as I do, uh, Pyro did own a hell of a lot of land in this campaign and that's why they won it. So they're going for this unusual tactic of just camping this one up on Arctic region. Less than five minutes to go now and they're just waiting for VAE to make the first move and of course being the landowner they don't need to make the first move. They can wait for VAE to push into them and therefore by waiting for VAE to push into them their VAE are going to lose more hit points early than than the pyro lads. Of course VAE traditionally a very strong contender on the global map. And starting to see a little bit of movement now. Those three heavy tanks looks like they might be bugging out. Doesn't look like anyone's got shots on them apart from Ooh, the Artie. Artie took that 113 down to a one shot. Is Skell gonna fix his itchy trigger trigger finger? He's thinking about it. They're all all those VAE guys look like they're all coming up to up along this route here. Looks like they might be gonna push that way or they might even push around this way. Let's see what they do. Three and a half minutes to go. 1-0 is the score. And I think this is the bit where they're going to push into these heavy tanks. Now bear in mind, a lot of these heavy tanks won't have been spotted. Some of them surely would have. But some of them won't have been. Now is Skull going to start shooting yet or not? Here we go. Plenty of damage get, getting done. Plenty of... Pyro lads putting damage into the enemy team. And with that TVP down there, Skell's probably thinking, I reckon I'm going to get spotted here soon. So he's just looking for an opportunity to do some damage on the enemy side. 2 1 is the score. The 907 gets taken out. And now the call's obviously been made to get rid of these guys that are down here in the south or the eastern side of the map 4-1 is the score a lot of those tanks up the top just got taken out then and now those guys down the bottom are going to cop a little bit of pain from the pyro lads 6-2 is the score E5 taking out the object 140 up the top and there's a few tanks down here near the water but Skell obviously changed his mind he thinks there's enough players down there to take out that last remaining medium tank as the two minute siren goes off the scores nine to three and it looks like looks like all Skell's going to be able to do in this game is to get one clip off as he comes around this corner to try and get some damage in from the rear of the VAE players and as luck would have it he comes up against a full health Object 140, puts on the auto aim, he's got one bullet left in his clip, and he takes him out of the game with the last shell, and of course they'll be talking on team speak, they'll know that that's the last shell in the clip, and the Object 140 on the enemy side is just a sitting duck now, and in the end a comfortable win by Pyro, 15 to 5 as we have a very quick look at the post game battle results the pyro lads as usual doing very well and carrying quite hard you can see all those tanks that Skell spotted and damaged only did damage to one tank that object 140 at the end of the game but he spotted just about 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 out of the 15 tanks he spotted from that OP position you might say. He only picked up 1900 hit points of damage but picked up over 6,000 uh, 6, spotting damage which is an absolutely massive result. That would be absolutely huge in any game, 6,000 spotting damage and that's why he got second score second top score in the results. The Conqueror Conqueror of Ritz the Rock having an awesome game there with 6,900 hit points of damage and the other one from Skims just over three and a half thousand but all in all a good result from Pyro even though it was a bit of a camp off 
towards the start, or the first probably three quarters of the game, at the end it was a pretty convincing win, winning 15 to 5. As we move on to the second game of this double shot of pyro action on Arctic region, this time they're going from the other side, and this this fight's against VAF, Vietnam Armed Forces, and with a similar but different lineup to the last game, you can see this time they've gone for two AMX 50Bs, a handful of American T11 OE5s, Skell being the only batch at, a few one Object 140s, a very popular game, tank in Tier 10 Clan Wars, and Skims this time in the TVP T5051, the ever popular new-ish check auto loader. Two artilleries. And once again the Conqueror gun carrier being probably the most popular tier 10 artillery piece, especially for clan wars. Now Skell's been doing a little bit of spotting here. He's almost, well, well, four enemy tanks have been spotted. A couple of bat chats, T62A and the IS-4. Of course, the VAF, they love their Russian medium tanks. And it looks like it's a, it's a little bit of a camp off again on the other side of the map this time. This time, of course, last game, the Pyro lads spawned northeast. This time, they're southwest. And Skell just looking for some spots on those enemy medium tanks, as well as that IS-4. A little bit of wait and see happening yet again. This object 140 over here will be looking for vision down this medium line where the mediums often go in a random battle. And these guys here will probably be looking for vision down this way and shots. And the T62A pack here near the water will be making sure that they get notification if anyone pushes down the traditional heavy line on the Arctic region. Apologies if my voice goes a bit funny during this one. I am still recovering from that nasty bug that I picked up just a few days ago. New Year's bug it might have been. Now Skell continuing to run around looking for spots on these enemy tanks. Already spotted four tanks but they want some more. The two tanks have come up as unknown. Now that's telling me that maybe, maybe it's artillery or maybe it's somebody who got a shot and weren't spotted. Now this batcher, going for a, there's a bit of a mini boost up here where you can get up high and get some spots. That enemy batcher will be looking from there. He might be able to spot these tanks here, but I reckon they might be just out of his line of sight. But that object 140 on the northeastern side is probably uh, probably getting lit, but it looks like VAF aren't pushing at this stage. They're probably work, trying to work out what Pyro are doing and where their tanks are. heard an artillery shell go off. If he was aiming at that bat chat, then it doesn't look like doesn't look like it hit. It was a very good tactic bringing two big tier 10 British artillery pieces because it's sort of even though it does a whopping amount of damage and, and it does have a, a long reload the Conqueror gun carry. I don't have any tier 10 artillery myself but I'm told that or I've noticed in watching replays that the British artillery that tier 10 is generally the best one to take to clan walls in most scenarios. Skull trying to make us a little bit seasick here, going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, looking for spots on the enemy tank. A few more tanks just been lit up then. Now those tanks have been lit up by the Object 140. And again. Skell showing great restraint, not firing on these tanks, not, doesn't want to give away his position. And it looks like a heap of shots just went into that T62A. Takes him down to 176 
Hit points, one more will do it. There it goes, a T double one, OE5. Taking out the Russian medium tank and bringing the score up to 1-0, the first kill of the game. Always good to get the first kill of a Clan Wars battle or any battle for that matter. And now, even though even though this is a bit of a camp off, having the having all these tanks where they are from the Pyro lads, they're maintaining the vision advantage they do so well. The object 140 up here being probably looks like he's in a bit of trouble. He is on less than half health, so he needs to be a little bit careful. But one would imagine that the Pyro guys are, are trying to maintain the vision advantage on Arctic region. Now it looks like the enemy object 140 is pushing on Hasami from Pyro. But T double one OE5 from back here gets the snipe kill on that enemy object 140 before he killed his teammate, which is an awesome thing to see. 3-0 is the score. The bat chat got taken out in that little skirmish as well. And Skims and Scal both going together with their auto loaders up to help this object 140 as well. And it looks like they're going for a bit of a push here. The AMX 50Bs are coming as well. And some Russian medium tanks. And obviously the call's been made. Let's get rid of this bat chat. Take that vision out of the game. 5 zip is now the score. Object 140 gets killed as well. And these having these medium tanks here, it's lighting up these heavy tanks. Which is allowing these American heavy tanks in the middle of the map to get some shots in. Scal unlucky to bounce a few of those shots, but he picks up the last hit into the American heavy tank. Bringing his damage count up to 1100. And as he's reloading, he's going to keep moving forward because he's on pretty much full health. And with 6-0 being the score, it's time to clean up these VAF guys and confirm this win. What's he doing now? Is this... This isn't boost training. What's he doing? He's going for another one of his boosts. They love it, the team efficiency guys, these boosts. Or maybe it's a... I don't know if he's going to get it. But looking at the mini map, you can see these Object 140s are moving right up under this hill where the enemy tanks will be. These ones are starting to move around this mound on the way. Skull's still looking at trying to get up this mountain. I don't call him the mountain gate for nothing. Looks like he's given up on that, or he's going to come up for a different angle, one of the two. 7-1 is the score. And it looks like all this group of heavy tanks, along with Skims and his TVP, are, are getting ready to do something on the southern side of the map. Skell lighting up that enemy IS-4. The IS-4 is probably safe from the Conqueror on the southern side of the map, but once the once this Conqueror here moves into his better position, probably up to here, then um, that IS-4, as well as the IS-7 that was last seen just behind where he is, might be in a little bit of strife. Of course, the Conqueror gun carrier has a pretty good arc on his on the trajectory of the shell, and a, um, they can put some damage in from. from some odd angles and that's that's the that's something that clan war callers love the british tier 10 artillery for that reason because they can shoot at different angles and take tanks out of the game even when they think they're safe it's happened to us all there you go that looked like an arty shell and now it's a the, it's a case of the vaf lads all hiding behind this ridge line and they've got some AMX 50Bs and the heavy tanks helping from back here of course the American E5s are awesome hull down and in that position they will just be showing the top of their turret as they shoot into those camping enemy tanks one of the E5s gets taken out by probably an artillery piece 
looks like the majority of the tanks on the southern side. And Skeld is, all Skeld's doing it at this point of the game is providing a bit of a defence for this arty back here with the Object 140s, but also vision so that those arties can continue to drop shells on top of the enemy tanks. You can see the IS-4s down to 619 hit points. Surely the Sea Lord gets taken out by the E-100. And his E-5. And now Skell knows he's going to be spotted here, but he reckons he can kill him before he takes a shot. He does take a shot, but gets rid of the heavily armoured IS-4 before taking a shot. He's only got one bullet left in his clip and he wants to get rid of this other tank before he shoots him, which he does. And with Skell on 533 hit points, he's reloading. He's already picked up 2,401 hit points of damage and now instead of pulling back, he's going to be finding where these enemy arties are and there they are. And just like in the end of any pub game, when there's only a couple of arties left, everyone just swoops on the artillery pieces. And again, not a bad result there from the Pyro lads winning 15 to 5 as we look at the post-game battle results. Even though it was a bit of a drawn-out game, you can see, look at that damage spread by the Pyro lads. Plenty of them doing plenty of damage. The Conqueror having an awesome game with 4, 6, 5, 3 damage. And the other one with just under 3,000. And pair that up with... Everyone else who did a fair bit of damage, it was a, a good result from the Pyro lads and a well-deserved win on Arctic Region. Thanks for watching these two replays. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. It was a little bit of a camp fest, but a good demonstration of how to win on Arctic Region, especially if you're a land owner, like the first game. I'm pretty sure they were a land owner. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for the replays. Skell and Skims from Pyro. Take care and see you all next time.